name is Kellen Kittle, and like most other 17-year-old girls, I would like to start this conversation by talking about myself and unloading my problems on complete strangers. So, <laughs> my first problem is tomorrow I'm taking my high school senior pictures, and I don't know how to pose, either this way or uh, this way. <laughs> and my second problem is that I am already 17 and I'm not yet Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube famous, and frankly, I don't know what's, what I've been doing with my life. Um, <laughs> And my third problem is our world is facing an energy crisis. Our, s our world is facing an energy crisis. Now, normally you don't hear teenagers worrying about uh, the global state of energy. However, the truth is that they should. You see, it's not today's leading scientists that will be forced to face the repercussions of our energy consumption in 15, 30, or 50 years. It's today's youth. Let me paint a picture of our current energy situation. Our world is quite literally powered by oil. It fuels our cars, planes, trains, businesses, and homes. It delivers our products, it processes our food, and it empties our wallets. Every single person in this audience is affected by oil, and you can feel this reality every time you pull up to the gas pump. And now, energy demand is understandably linked directly to population and economic growth. And the world population, already a cozy seven billion, is, is Projected to increase by 1.4 billion, or 20% in just these next 20 years. That means in just these next two decades, we will, we will be, there will be more people with more energy requirements than this world has ever had to face. What's more is that this energy demand can only be met by a small portion of the world's countries. With more than 80% of oil, global oil reserves in just 10 countries, and more than half of these in just three, our enormous energy demand becomes synonymous with an overwhelming energy dependence. Not to mention, there will be a staggering increase in carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases that pollute the earth, a direct byproduct of a society fueled by oil. So with these facts increasingly dominating our society, one can almost feel a mist settling over the future of energy consumption. The action essential to addressing the looming challenges of energy security and climate change within the lifetime of my generation is the development of viable, commercially self-sustaining, renewable energy. What better solution is there than the energy source that has powered this Earth for millions of years, the sun? Solar energy captured by plants constitutes almost all the fuel you will use in your lifetime. The plants make their food from the sun, and we make our food, or feed our food, with plants. So to find the purest, most abundant form of energy, it only makes sense to turn to the nature's shining example of energy conversion, leaves. If we can harness the energy from the sun, we have the ability to fuel our future and literally cut through the daunting mist before us with the sun's brilliant rays. So why isn't the sun, if it has the ability to cure our energy problems, already our main energy source? The answer is artificial photosynthesis. We need to construct a way to mimic leaves to take sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide and directly make fuels. And not only must we convert solar energy into electric energy, but we must do this at a scale that is commercially competitive to oil. The key component we are missing to this solar energy equation is a pesky little critter called chlorophyll. So many of you may have heard this in high school biology classes as the stuff that makes plants green. Not only is chlorophyll involved in the pigmentation of leaves, but it is also the main center for the chemical reactions that take place inside the plant to pass energy throughout it. And the problem is we can't get chlorophyll to work outside of a plant in a test tube. So now we have a problem with our solution. What's our solution to our solution? You. The field of research and production of renew renewable energy is understandably a field that is growing exponentially in this day and age. With the world's increasing energy demands, it'll be my generation that will be forced to come with, up with a solution to meet these demands. But we don't need to wait until we've graduated college or until we've become a master in our fields we can look for a solution today. This past March, I was awarded first place in the Temecula Valley Science Fair for experimentation with dye-sensitized solar cells. In other words, I took relatively inexpensive materials like conductive glass, triiodide, and blackberries, and was able to convert solar energy into small levels of electric energy. Through experimenting with the pH of the solar cells, I stumbled upon a way to create a more efficient fuel cell. Following the science fair, researchers working with the Center for Chemical Innovation and the Solar Science Division at Caltech contacted me, and I was invited to present my findings to the National Science Foundation. All right, well, it's true that I did not discover a solution to the world's problems, 
what I did discover was a passion. What this experience taught me is that anyone can be a scientist, and that young minds, which are not predisposed to a conclusion, are able to look at a problem from a completely different perspective. You don't have to have a professional laboratory, millions of dollars in funding, or a degree to foster curiosity. But in the end, it is passion and curiosity that will find a solution to the world's most pressing problems. So the message I have for my generation is, you may still be a kid, but you're not just a kid. You have what it takes to find the sunshine through the mist. Thank you.